Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my review of Last Night in Soho. I watched this last night, not in Soho. Um, I enjoyed this film, I enjoyed this film a lot. We'll talk non-spoilers, then I'll give you a spoiler warning and we'll talk spoilers later in the video. Uh, I enjoyed this movie uh, for a few reasons. I like Edgar Wright, generally speaking on a whole, right? I think he's pretty good. He has made some garbage films from time to time, of course he has. But on a whole, his films are pretty good. You know, they're stylistic. Uh, they're very, they are very Edgar Wright at the end of the day, and I think it's nice to watch a director who, you know, makes something for himself as well as other people, and has a stylistic flair that runs through each movie. So I like Edgar Wright, uh, and as a result of that, I was primed to like this movie. I like Anya Taylor Joy; she's fantastic. I like Thomasin McKenzie; uh, I think she was really good uh, as well. Um, I like Matt Smith; I was primed, right? The music was good, the cinematography was good. Generally speaking, on a whole, it was all pretty good. I think where this film actually excels is in the fact that the trailer just reveals nothing. Like, I watched one trailer and I was like, okay, cool. I'm keen. This looks compelling. It looks interesting. You know, I mean, even the synopsis over on IMDb says, an aspiring fashion designer is mysteriously able to enter the 60s where she encounters a dazzling wannabe singer, but the glamour is not all it appears to be, and the dreams of the past start to crack and splinter into something darker. I mean, from that, what do you... What's the story? I mean, you don't really know. Uh, and, and that's one of the things. The trailer did a great job of just hiding most things for this film, right? And that's the, that's the trick here. So, Thomas and McKenzie is the wannabe fashion designer. Uh, she falls asleep and starts sort of seeing the 60s, right? Last night in Soho. Last night. Uh, and she starts to see uh, Sandy's history. Sandy's past. Uh, you know, however that may be, that's Annie Taylor Joy's character uh, and Matt Smith, right? You've seen the trailer, so you know it's their interaction that's at the centre of this. Um, Thomas and Mackenzie did a really good job of playing this sort of cracking character. What I mean by that, is like her fragmenting mind, she does a really good job of that. Annie Taylor Joy's great in this. Uh, you know, she could have been given a bit more to do. But what she is given was very, very well performed. Um, and like, I'm, I'm an Annie Taylor Joy fan. I think she's great. Now, Matt Smith, who'd have thought he could play this sort of, you know, this sort of, I don't know, North London gangster, hard man, badass, right? He's sort of like a sleazy grease ball. You don't really want to cross him. A bit of a Jack the Lad, a bit of a player. But he does a really good job with it. He chews the scenery in, in a great way. FYI, in a great way. Uh, and their interaction, Matt Smith's and Annie Taylor-Joy's interaction is great. It, it makes me sad that Matt Smith isn't in more things. And anything that Matt Smith is in, franchise-wise, just seems to die a death. You know, I mean, he was Terminator Genisys, gone. Um, was cut from... Oh, the the last uh, the rise of Skywalker. Matt Smith was cut from that. He's been in all these things, and he's such a good, uh, good actor. But he's just not never given the break that he deserves. So I enjoyed him in this. Uh, the story itself, I can't reveal anything without going into spoilers. But I will say this: there were some twists and turns that I was not expecting, and I think they did a very good job of hiding the main narrative structure from the trailers and also just hiding it like even in the film itself i wasn't really expecting a lot that happened in this movie it's not massively scary but there are some moments where you're like oh that's a bit unnerving oh mm, not not too pleasant to watch uh the music and the score was great but like both of them were fantastic obviously it's the 60s so that was pretty decent it was nice nice to hear all that music come back, uh, and also, you know, that sort of time seemingly fit Edgar Wright nicely with his sort of stylistic flair. Uh, the modern day stuff was a little bit contrived. There's a woman called Jocasta. I think her name was, yeah, J Jocasta. Um, just, you know, just horrible woman that was interacting with Thomas and uh, Mackenzie's Eloise. A bit contrived. I'm just like, are these people real? I don't know. 
I don't know what kids are like these days. I don't interact with kids, obviously. So, yeah, it was a bit. That was a bit contrived and a bit of a bit of a nuisance. But overall, good. Really, really good. There's one actor that I need to give sort of a special praise to. Uh, Terence Stamp. Terence Stamp was great in this, uh, and he's a good actor anyway. Like he's he's actually been in a lot more stuff than you would kind of think. You know, sort of look into it. But he's really good. Anyway, overall, good film. One of Edgar Wright's good films. Obviously, he does make some bad films, but he was good doing this. This was good. His story, screenplay by Christy Wilson Cairns. Uh, so it was good. I can recommend it. Now, do some spoilers, shall we? Shall we do some spoilers? Let's do some spoilers. Because I don't want to reveal anything in non spoilers. So you've been warned. On to spoilers. Onwards to the spoilers, ladies and gents. So Thomas and Mackenzie, uh, her mother committed suicide because she, I guess, couldn't handle seeing ghosts anymore. She has a gift, which now Thomas and Mackenzie's Eloise has a gift. The same gift, she can see ghosts, right? She can see ghosts and sort of what happens and stuff like that. She keeps seeing her mother. She has like a premonition sort of vibe, that sort of thing, right? A little bit supernatural, but it's not hammed up. But that is the gateway by which Thomas and Mackenzie can go into the past. Uh, she's sleeping in the bed uh, that Anya Taylor-Joy is supposedly murdered in, right? Uh, I think you sort of see that in the trailer. I can't really remember rightly. Um, yeah, you do see it in the trailer. Uh, seemingly murdered in. I say that because obviously it's spoilers and she's not murdered, which was the big twist, actually. The big twist at the end. Uh, and she's just reliving the past in the 60s in Soho. Uh, and, you know, they're quite alike. Uh, Eloise wants to become a fashion designer. Sandy wants to become a singer. Sandy gets into contact with Matt Smith, who is basically a pimp. That basically just pimps her out, you know. And and it's it's kind of there is this sort of play up of well, you know, uh, you have to please these men for you to do this and to achieve this and blah 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 and. You know, there's lots of you know men calling her a slut and a slag and all this kind of stuff, which I don't know if Americans know those terms, but obviously not good terminology to call a woman. Don't do it. It's not nice. Um, and basically, the big twist is at the end is that the owner of the the, the bedsit that Eloise is sleeping in is actually Sandy Alexandra Collins. And what we thought was watching Sandy's murder was actually Sandy murdering Matt Smith's character. Uh, and basically burying them in the walls and in the floorboards and all this kind of stuff. That's what Sandy did. She went off and murdered all these people. And these people that were played up for scares during the film were actually trying to ask Eloise for help. So it wasn't that Eloise was seeing Sandy's life, but sort of was as well, but was mainly actually seeing Matt Smith's, uh, Jack's life, as well as all these men. So... Quite a big twist, actually, and I, I think they did pretty well at keeping that a secret. I, I didn't expect it coming. Um, I didn't. Maybe I was a little bit tired. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't on top form, but I thought it was great. I thought it was a good film. I had a good time with it. Music was good. Cinematography was good. Uh, sound mixing never normally gets a good uh, rap in films or, you know, critics noticing it. But I tell you what, sound mixing was good. Like, you could hear everything nice and clearly. I'm so sick of watching films where I can't hear the fucking audio. Because some music's playing. I want to hear them talk, you idiot. Get the get better sound mixers. Uh, but it was good. Good movie. Enjoyed this a lot. Good Edgar Wright film. Would recommend. Go watch it. If you have seen it, let me know what you guys think. Love to hear it. I actually forgot this was even out. So I'm a little bit late on this. But would love to hear your thoughts. Cheers there, guys. Take care.